Here's a, here's a real nice one, Euphorbia lomelia. Very thick stem, the Euphorbia coming from a, a massive uh, basal. I don't know if that's a codex or what, but it's uh, it's pretty big. It's big. Much, uh, much larger than it's... Uh, well, you get some rudimentary leaves right there. Left over from the days before I learned to photosynthesize through its stem, perhaps. You get Euphorbia anti-syphilitica, which is a close relative, but that occurs further east to, you know, into Texas and Chihuahua and only gets about, I don't know, 12 to 18 inches tall at most. Same general uh, features. You know, it's a stem photosynthesizer, but it's got the much, uh, much narrower, thinner stems. More wispy, like a broom. Yucca valida, Stenocereus gamosus. And uh, we had a nice uh, organ pipe over there. I don't know where it went. Stenocereus thurbri, where's that at? Anyways, you can see we've dropped down onto the uh, east side of uh, the the little mountain that we uh, had to cross over coming from the west in the Vizcaino Desert. And we've re-entered a land of uh, bujum trees, Fulcaria columnaris, uh, as well as a very abundant uh, and painful agave. Uh, as well as Bursra, the other... Uh, genus of elephant tree and a frankincense family. Uh, the general rock type, of course, that's granite. And uh, this appears to be uh, some sort of metamorphic uh, intermediate. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what's going on up here. Could be something nice. I think it's something pretty nice. Never ceases to amaze me some of these agaves. Such a tiny basal rosette of leaves can send up such a massive inflorescence. It's got to be about 20 feet tall. Of course, there's Stenocereus uh, gamosus, the uh, galloping cactus. Oh, nice Mariathrus. Is that a Mariathrus? It could be. I thought this was a, a peritile, a peritile, but it's just a plural coronis, I believe. And then, of course, you got the. Uh, here you got. Your bursera, probably just the microphylla, is a genus with a lot of speciation, and it looks so much like they pick a cormus, doesn't it? It kind of does, except this has a really delicious, delicious smelling berries on it. Little like uh, purple dingleberries that uh, smell like frankincense when you crunch them. Oh, hi, Jake. Now, of course, uh, the reason I drove all the way out into the middle of the desert during the dry season, when not much is flowering, oh, except there is a facilia right there. That's kind of nice. These, uh, these wonderful cave paintings uh, done by the, uh, you know what, I forgot the name of the indigenous people that did these. Was it Cochimi? I don't know. But I will tell you that the first time I ever came here, I was on a massive dose of edibles this was years ago, and uh, we were having trouble realizing if we were just really high, or if these uh, figures did indeed have uh, six fingers. Now there are many more uh, extensive uh, murals like this located in the uh, Sierra de San Francisco, but you gotta get a guia to uh, assist you and also some uh, proceeds got to the local people. But uh, it's similar to ones in Sierra San Francisco. Are, Jesus Christ, they must be, I don't know, 20 feet tall. Certainly they were done with the aid of a scaffold. No idea on age. Oh, there's a nice pronghorn. Anyway, so although it's the dry season, uh, there's still uh, a lot of diversity to be seen here, even though not much is flowering. 
is some kind of a euphorb. Looks almost like a croton, but it's uh, probably not. You can tell it's a euphorb because it's got a tree lobe fruit. Then, of course, uh, ficus right here. Moraceae. You know, the mulberry family's actually got a lot of uh, succulent members. It's very successful in a uh, xeric climates. And uh, these, of course, uh, just love to, uh, they have a wonderful habit of uh, clinging to racks. That's the Trixis californica around here as well. And of course you get some uh, cereals, Fucaria columnaris, uh, as well as uh, your Stenocereus gamosus, quite ubiquitous all over the planet. Now as you can tell by this uh, flower being red, it's pollinated by hummingbirds since the insects don't generally see in the red uh, part of the spectrum. This is uh, yet another Ocotillo, it's Fucaria diguidii, named her after a uh, dig diguette, another dead guy. I really wish they would stop doing that again. Of course, I wonder how many of those botanists were just uh, fart-sniffing academics, uh, as they tend to be. Anyway, uh, there's also some lovely uh, Stenocereus thurberi, as you could tell, the uh, organ pipe cactus down there poking its little head up. Now, it's getting hot, so it might be time for me to uh, go back soon.